Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Ringo here. Today I'm back with more Path to Carcosa. We're on the sixth scenario, Return to the Paladin Mask. I've already done all the setup, but before we get into anything involving the scenario, let's talk about the deck upgrades. As always with Jenny, we need to talk for a moment. I experienced two things during the previous scenario. One was a surprising amount of jank where I was struggling with either card count or resource count when I wasn't expecting to. And the other was not really something I'm struggling with, but I was far better at finding clues than I had any need to be. So what I've done is I've changed my setup for the red clock. It really didn't get to show off its power last scenario, in part because of me forgetting about it, and in part because of jank preventing it from getting properly set up. But I've decided the Eye of Chaos is a much too expensive payoff for a thing I don't really need. I don't need the clue finding ability it gets me. And in fact, haste performs a very similar role in the arcane slot, but it's much more versatile, so I'd much rather be running it. And since I don't need Eye of Chaos anymore, I'm switching out my Hawkeye folding camera for a magnifying glass. However, unlike Eye of Chaos, which calls zero experience, my new charge holder is a Relic Hunter decorated skull, which calls six. And man, it feels like I have to be making the wrong decision when I'm spending almost a golden pocket watch of experience to get decorated skull at my deck. And this should smooth out Jenny a bit. In the final upgrades, I'm not quite sure where I'm going from here. I have an idea, but it's very hard to cut cards from the deck at this point. Magnifying Glass is a book boost, but it's technically not needed. And Backstab is damage, but maybe I could find a more efficient source of damage. And other than that, what here do you actually want to cut? But that's for next time. Now, let's talk about Lily. Lily is an adult, and she made the sensible upgrade. She has five experience, she got a stand together, and banked two of it. That's all there is to say, there's nothing complicated is happening here. Cyclopean Hammer is insane, so I'm just building a deck designed to set that up really efficiently. I don't have the experience to get a good backup weapon online, so I'm just choosing to keep the jank that I've currently got. Also worth noting, Jenny has also banked two experience, so hers when she runs Obel. Even though I had four experience from my Green Medallion, I've only added three here because I didn't buy a four experience card, I just bought two threes. So, like I had said, I've already done all the setup, let's read the agendas, the acts, and start talking about the scenario itself. Empire of the Dead. The dank chill air of the catacombs penetrates your clothes and causes you to shiver. Everywhere you look, the remains of the dead greet you, a grim reminder of your old mortality. Each location is connected to each location adjacent to it. Six Doom Threshold. Act 1A through the catacombs. At the end of a long tunnel next to you, the stranger steps to the darkness, his pale mask glinting in the candlelight. You call out for him to wait. He glances your way before vanishing into the shadows. Once more, you're forced to track him down to find answers. Objective, find the man in the pallid mask. He is somewhere in the catacombs. Do not advance until you're instructed. We have two agendas, four acts. And the way catacombs work is whenever you reveal one, you're going to have to spend clues to enter it, barring the one you start at. It's going to put more catacombs into play depending on which card you just revealed. The bottom five cards of the catacomb deck include the objective that triggers this act. However, there are also victory points to the catacomb deck, so we do want to do all of them. For now, let's start resolving the beginning of the scenario stuff. This resource token just means this is the entrance to the catacombs. Which is relevant for many things, including the skull, which is simply of minus the number of locations you are away from the entrance, maximum five. You can see we start in the gate to hell. The reason for this is because we came here voluntarily. When it enters play, I'm going to put the top two catacombs in the deck above and below the gate to hell. And then this is how they're all going to work. We're going to keep expanding catacombs, and everything is connected orthogonally, I think is the word. Up and down, left and right, but not diagonally. Anyway, the Gate to Hell is a one shroud, four clue location, and there's no real additional text to it. However, because we successfully interviewed Ishimaru Haruka, we are able to reveal one of our starting locations. And I'm going to choose the one beneath us. It is the Secret Passage. This is a new one from Return to Set. It's a five shroud, two clue location with no victory. Action if you control the class of Black Onyx, you place the class within the skull's eye socket, and the passage opens. Reveal the catacomb location to the right of Secret Passage, and of course, when I put it into play, I'm going to put a catacombs to the right of it. I'm going to be honest, this sounds like a real good reason to go up. I don't really care about spending my actions at a 5 shroud location to move here. And now, let's do our mulligans. Black Market, double, double, deep knowledge, Leo DeLuca. Alright, cool. Eldritch Sophist can be postponed a very long time, we don't need him yet. I think you hold all of this. That seems right to me. The Black Fan too, huh? It'll be a while till it comes online. We're struggling for um, valuable things outside of this. On Lily's end, as always, Prepared, Emergency, and Ever Vigilant are underneath her. Stick to the plan. 
We draw all the weakness. Actually, all the weaknesses. Jesus. I'll keep standing other level threes, but the rest of this is not Cyclopean Hammer, and it can just leave. Well, that's not Cyclopean Hammer. First time in a while that we've missed it. We'll see if we keep missing it, though. So, start of the first round, very easy opening turn. Uh, we're going to be playing Black Market, it turns out, because I have four more resources than I normally would. Actually, originally I wanted to play Black Market, but I was wondering if I should maybe hold off because I have so little money. Uh, but now with two copies of Stand Together, I want to hold off because I just need to get the cards out of my hand because Jenny is already going to be at nine. So, first action, I'm playing two copies of Stand Together, or one copy of my two Stand Togethers. Falsian Bargain and Haste is good over there. Cyclopean Hammer. All right, cool, we're done. Uh, second stand together. Crawling the sign, there goes my first turn. Cool. And we're obviously playing Cyclopean Hammer as our last action to be online, which will spend most of our resources, but we're fine. I'm going to spend five of my resources playing Leo DeLuca. Then I'm going to spend two of my actions getting rid of drawing the sign so that I can actually have a hand and do things. And it seems obvious that I'm supposed to be putting double double into play with the rest of my money. That's it. Nothing weird about this scenario to think about. So upkeep phase. Is that the second easy mark? No, it's the first. And Tetsu and Mori Brother Xavier are both already here there, which is fantastic. One of six doom and evil cards. There are no humanoid enemies, so this gains Surge. Poltergeist would be a problem, except for the Cyclopean Hammer is a relic weapon. Also, I think this is the first scenario since Curtain Call where we got to see Poltergeist. It feels like such an iconic enemy, I didn't realize how rarely you actually see it. And our current location goes up to 3 Shroud, which is a bit of a problem considering like the current state of our book. Anyway, I'm going to engage and swing the Cyclopean Hammer. This thing is dead. And I'm going to spend my last action playing Emergency Cash because I have a lot of expensive assets in my hand that I want to play next turn with Everfetulent. I'm going to tap my Double Double. I'm going to play two copies of Faustian Bargain and gain 10 resources. Then I'm just going to proceed to get these cards out of my hand. I don't want this haste. Or I do want this haste, rather. Just not in my hand. I want this Black Fan. And we tap haste now, because I've done two play actions in a row, to play this deep knowledge. And uh, we're going to need to get these curses out of the bag, because this is beginning to be a problem. Alright, uh, the deck is online, it's just a matter of spending enough turns to get there. I'm debating if it's right to play an emergency cash now. I've got hot streak, emergency cash, easy marks for additional double-double targets, I don't think I need to hold it. I think I just want to set up faster, so I'm going to play one of these without Double Double. Alright, and that's it for this round. Upkeep phase. Well connected is nice to see. Not quite overdrawing on either of them. Two of six doom. The Malform Skeleton. Excuse me? Th okay, this is new from the Return to set. It's a 4-4-1 monster, which is decently threatening if you're not evading it. It's a hunter. And the thing you immediately notice about it is it hits for 3-3, but actually forced when Malform Skeleton attacks you, it deals either its damage or its horror instead of both. So it's hitting for 3 attack or 3 horror, not both. Also, if it resolves its 100 keyword and there's no one within two locations of it, it just teleports to you. Not that that'll be coming up, but it is kind of spooky. And for Lily, we got a Poltergeist. Which is a bit too much enemy to deal with cleanly, but it doesn't have to be clean. I'm going to go first on Jenny. I'm just going to evade at 3 to 1 until it works. Oh yeah, there's a lot of curses in here, aren't there? That's actually only minus 2 because I'm at the starting location. So we evade it immediately, first try. Cool. So originally I planned to play my Black Market, but I forgot because of the enemy cascade. And I think it would be dishonest of me to play my Black Markets now. The reason being that I think the reason I forgot to play them is because I was worried I'd be spending my whole turn dodging and not able to capitalize on them. I will however be playing double double on this emergency cache and seeing where that takes us. So I'm going to gain up to 17 resources and draw two cards. I'm going to test 3 to 3 and I'm going to fail. So I take two damage. I'll give one of that to Leo, not that it matters. But that does get us to a high enough amount of money where we can have our fifth action from the black fan, which is very nice. 
let's imagine that I played Class of Black Onyx before any of this stuff, because obviously I do not want to spend extra money on everything. I would just get rid of this instead. And I think what I'm going to do is draw three. That feels pretty terrible, actually. I'm going to play an undoubled Falstein bargain. There are enough curses in the bag already. And the reason I'm doing this is because it gets me to 21, which gives me a plus one boost, putting me at plus one to my current location because of Obscuring Fog. And at least I can get rid of curse tokens. So I do fail to get rid of a curse. And that's Jenny's turn. Lily is going to start swinging. First against her enemy. It's dead. Relic weapon doesn't care about Poltergeist attacks at all. And next, we want to swing twice at Malform Skeleton. We're swinging at 9 to 4. Skull is 3. It has 1 health left. And it lives. So let's mark that it has 3 health. Or 3 damage, rather. Upkeep phase. This thing does not have praise. So I'll be giving it to Lily. And we get our upkeeps. Azure Flame can leave immediately. Technically, Scrying is probably worse. I don't know. Azure Flame seems genuinely irrelevant. And upkeep over here. Until report is nice to see, though I don't think I'll be using it relatively soon. Catacombs docent. Spawn nearest unrevealed location. So I guess we're putting him above us. It's the only valid location. He's at a parlay test book four to interpret the guide's ravings. If you succeed, look at the reveal side of any catacombs location and play group limit once per game. This is a really neat enemy. I like this a lot. I don't remember him at all, but I really like this card. And for Lily's evil card, it is the shadow behind you. I remember this. It gives you the ability to look behind you. At the end of your turn, if you didn't do that, then you either discard all your cards or discard all your resources. And then you discard the shadow behind you. So either costs you an action forever, or eventually you get rid of it, but you get rid of everything else too. It can be fairly brutal, but it's not that hard to play around, and we're probably going to be getting rid of it this turn. I'll take Lily's action first. Trying to kill this skeleton thing. Got rid of it. And in terms of getting cards out of my hand, I can play 11 resources with Vigilant that's down to... Oh, that's just perfectly a little bit off of where I'd want to be. It's fine, though. I play Ever Vigilant with my stick to the plan. That's my second action. I play Brother Xavier, Tetsuo Amori, and Safeguard for 10 resources, discounted by 3. Oh, wait, I did my math wrong. No, that gives me 3 resources. Last action, I play Holy Rosary for 2. And then my turn ends, I haven't used this ability, I lose all my resources. Oh no. So that would be a good example of that card doing nothing. There are other times where it costs you one action every turn for a very long amount of time. But usually you're going to end up being able to get rid of it for one resource at some point. Big money notwithstanding, I guess. As always, I have forgotten to use Black Market. But let's imagine that I didn't. Because it has no negative impacts, or positive impacts rather, for me to do this. It only ever makes things worse to not use Black Market. Both easy marks, huh? Can I cycle my deck this turn if I play the second one? This draws enough cards that I don't feel the need to play another Black Market. So first action, I'm going to play an easy mark, and then I'm going to reaction into additional easy marks. But I guess I should do it one at a time. Because the reality is that if I hit my signature weakness... I'm going to have to stop playing easy marks, but I don't hit it yet. It's in the bottom nine. I've gotten set up really fast this game. I don't have like all of my cards in play, but I have enough of them, I feel like. So I'm going to double double this hot streak for 10 resources as my next action. Then I'm going to play Green Man Medallion for one. I played easy mark. I double double hot streak. I played Green Man Medallion. I tap Green Man Medallion. And I'm going to try to get this number very, very high in this scenario if I can. I've only got two scenarios left, and if I want to buy something like Ace in the Hole or the Golden Pocket Watch, I need to tap this now. Not that I have any patience for it, but I think this scenario just goes on long enough naturally that this doesn't feel like sandbagging. I'm going to get well connected out, and I'm going to investigate again. Shroud difficulty is still three. But this gives me um, a million. I'm at four base plus eight. For a total of 12, minus 2, Obscuring Fog is out of here, and I get a clip. That brings us to the upkeep phase. A Cursed Follower is going to go in this location. He's going to start throwing curses in the bag, so let's try to remember it this time. Lola's nice to see. Very good asset to be picking up. And evil cards. The pit below attaches to our location. 
And what it does is it gives it plus one shroud at the end of the round. Everyone here is going to take three damage. But I don't think we'll be here at the end of the round. I think we're fine on that front. On Lily's end, she's testing flat three to three. I can counter espionage this for her. But like if she takes damage, it doesn't matter. So why would I bother? Minus two, she takes two damage. Here you go, Brother Xavier. So for Jenny's turn, I'm going to play Lola Santiago. Oh, uh, these go back in my deck at the start of the round. And then I need to consider, do I want to play Black Market this turn? And the answer is no, I want to get these clues and leave. And then I'm going to investigate. Shroud value is two. I have five book. So I'm up three. It's got three clues on it. I only really need two, though. Minus one and minus two is just enough. And I get a second clip. At this point, I'm debating if I want to get these other two clues. And the answer is no, because I want to deal with this catacombs docent. So I'm going to move up as Jenny. Lily is going to activate her safeguard and tag along. This man will engage with Jenny, I guess. Actually, you can parlay someone else's enemy, so I'll just give it to Lily. And now I'm going to parlay at a million with Well Connected just on auto fail. And this lets us reveal this one location we haven't been to. Also, we should totally have revealed this location when we got here, so let's do that first. Nice, it's victory. Three shroud, four clues. While you're investigating the cavern, you have one fewer hand slot. I don't like that at all. Uh, right now, it doesn't do anything, though, so we're okay. There are some characters that that's just really, really unpleasant. It is nice to see counterplay to occult lexicon plus ancient stones, though. It's just unlikely to matter. Anyway, when Bonehole Cavern is revealed, put the top two catacombs stack into play to the right and below. There is no below. That's already taken up, but we can't put one to the right. And then when I do the successful parlay check, we can open either of these. Since this one's actually connected to us, though, I'm going to reveal this one that we can't get to. And I should pay those clues for coming to our location. That's very important. This isn't a victory location, but it is another return to that I'm unfamiliar with. Four shroud, two clues. After you end your turn at Sea of Skulls, you either take one direct order or choose and discard three cards from your hand. So I can choose either above Sea of Skulls, below Sea of Skulls, or to the right of the location furthest from Sea of Skulls. And then I put a horror on that location to signify that it's connected to Sea of Skulls. And I'm going to choose up here. Because that makes our map very easy to move through. Now that this is just guaranteed to be a circle. So that library docent, or catacombs docent rather, is very helpful. And I can just investigate here, but I'm only up to... I haven't used my double-double this turn. Which makes sense to have nothing to use double-double on. Other than intel report, I mean. Which I'll be doing. I double-double my intel report. I just take all four clues. And then I tap Green Man Medallion for another three resources. And that's Jenny's turn. Lily has problems that she didn't start her turn with, so she's going to beat them to death with the Zycopian Hammer. And they're gone. Uh, we can easily open new locations now, so I'll be doing that. I spend two of Jenny's clues. And Lily goes ahead to the next catacombs. Candlelit Tunnels. Three Shroud, four clues. Test three book to read an ancient sign. If you succeed, look at any... Not revealed, though. You just look at it. Oh, no. Is this guy look at or reveal? Imagine that didn't happen, then. Thank God I caught that, because most of the time when I make a sloppy mistake, it doesn't really change the outcome of the game. But that would be a completely different scenario if I let that play stay as it was. Anyways, the forced effect is that when I reveal candlelit tunnels, I put the top two catacombs into play left and right. So this is still going here, it's just not connected down anymore. And at this point, it looks pretty consistent that we're moving right, so I'm going to move all of this over. And I'm sure I've forgotten that curse token from this enemy once already. Lily can't really investigate on her own right now, so I'm just going to draw to find six cents. It's the best thing she could do with her dead actions. So, enemy phase, we got a curse to the bag, and upkeep phase. Counter espionage doesn't really do much for us at this point. And we're going to be testing six to two over here. Easy. Top of the round, five of six doom. And evil cards. I don't want to do that. Uh, this character is never going to have an empty hand or an empty resource pool. So I'll be counter espionaging for four. To get rid of this and draw a card from my deck. On a Jenny's card, or Lily's rather, she gets the other shadow behind you. Apparently there are three of these then. 
and she'll probably just be taking the resource loss from this one. I don't really have anything I need to pay for if I can't find my copy of Sixth Sense anyway. I'm going to go first on a Jenny. I'm going to move right to catch up to Lily. This is a three shroud location. I'm currently at five book. I would like to be at more. Oh, let's play Black Market at the start of the investigation phase. I keep forgetting this. It's, it's so unnatural to me to have a card where I have to play it outside of my turn. Oh, the man in the pallet mask could actually be set aside or removed from the game. Apparently I forgot to do that. So like I was saying, I'm not happy with my book score, but Magnifying Glass fixes that. Also, I have Charged Skull. I'm missing only Eldritch Sophist right now. If I draw three cards and play the Red Clock, does that guarantee I hit Sacrificial Beast? Is that what happens? Yeah, it's not actually good. Drawing cards right here is actually terrible because I missed Sacrificial Beast. I'm going to go ahead and play the Red Clock for two. That seems like a thing that's hard to argue with. I'm also going to go ahead and play the Decorated Skull for zero. Which means I could use haste to... Uh, do you think this is enough assets? This might be enough assets, huh? Anyway, regardless, I'm going to use haste to uh, investigate after I do these two investigate checks at 6 to 3. So first one, that's one clue. We are two locations away, that's two clues. We tap haste. Two locations away, that's three clues. And of course, we'll tap Green Man Medallion, even though we're getting low on money to get more resources or more experience rather over here. Gah, I'm so bad at the game. I should have just double doubled my black market when I saw what came out. Like I can just look at the cards available and recognize that's the correct decision. Oh, well. I'm knowing when to draw a card is my first action, and this is specifically why. Because if I hit exactly six cents on my next card, then I want to heat my resources. So I'll look behind me and gain a resource. So that next turn, I can just go up to four resources, play the six cents, and let the shadow behind me fall off. I don't need to worry about it, it's just costing one resource. No enemies do anything, that's not true. They add a curse to the bag, upkeep phase. Deep knowledge is nice to see. There was a one in three chance of hitting my weakness, which would be a bit of a trek to get to. Not that we couldn't, but I would rather not. This triggered a long time ago and dealt three damage to nobody because we all left immediately when we saw that card. And upkeep is done. Agenda progresses. Next agenda has 12 doom. That's good to see. The Spectre of Death. We got an enemy. Spawn the starting location. Hunter retaliates. When Spectre of Death is exhausted, it takes one less damage from each attack made against it. After you fail a skill test while attempting to evade Spectre of Death, it attacks you. Oh, that's right! Alert came out with Forgotten Apes. They hadn't made it into a keyword yet. I was really confused by that. I was like, doesn't that just mean alert? <laughs> anyway, it hits for 2-2, two, two, and it's got a 3-10-3 three, three stat line since we're in two-player. Honestly, not that scary to me. I don't want it to hit me during its turn, though. That is important. We'll deal with it eventually, though. It's just like moving one space at a time substantially behind us. We're not worried about it now. Anyway, next agenda, 12 Doom Threshold, Empire of the Undead. All around you, the eyes of the skulls glow with an otherworldly hue. A ghostly voice echoes throughout the labyrinthine catacombs. You sense a threatening presence looming around you. It's just outside of your vision, past the dim fog that permeates through the catacombs around every corner. And locations are still connected, 12 Doom Threshold. I'm going to go first on Jenny. I assume I'm not going to need to get all these clues to progress, so I'm just going to spend two immediately and move. Lily will be tagging along with me. Crypt of the Sepulchral Lamp is investigated using Brain and said the skill indicated by the investigation attempt. It has two Shroud, four clues. When it's put into play, I put the top two into play above and to the right. And now we're almost down to the objective cards. Oh, and these at the start of the investigation phase go back into my deck. I need one more clue if I want to be certain that I can progress a location even if it doesn't have clues on it in case that's a thing that exists so i'm going to investigate here i'm only at four to two by default but that's fine yeah it's like curses are a thing but then i'm getting them out of the bag i'll investigate again plus one i get the clue and i'm going to immediately spend two clues in a movement action i'm not going to get a haste action this round so i'll investigate using haste which gets me a clue and then I spend my two clues in a movement action 
Going up means I'll never loop back, so going right seems better. It feels like going up is wrong somehow. I'm not confident one way or the other. Well of Souls, victory one, good to see. Four trial, two clues. After I end my turn here, you either take one direct horror or discard two random cards from your hand. And forced when it's revealed, I put a card into play anywhere other than to its left. I'm going to go down. So I think what I want to do is move left so that we don't have to take this penalty. This is all because of safeguard, by the way. Safeguard level two is just absurd. It lasts the whole turn, which when someone has this many actions, it's pretty silly. And then on Lily's turn, hilariously, since I'm at the location where you investigate with your brain, this seems thoroughly unnecessary. I spend three resources to play six cents, and then I investigate twice without six cents because it doesn't do anything. That's not true, actually. Six cents is objectively better. So yeah, I'll investigate with six cents. That way, if I get a face token, I can take my clues from the victory point location. And I'm up two. That's one clue, two clues. And because I never use this, I now have to either lose all my cards or all my resources, and one resource is worth a whole lot less than six cards. Before the round ends, I'm going to tap this for three more resources. And now we're starting to get dangerously low on resources. We don't even have this action from the black fan anymore. Well, we'll be getting it back immediately, I guess, so that's not true. Enemy phase, hunter hunts, curse guy puts curses in the bag, and upkeep phase. That's exactly what I didn't want to say. Jenny can no longer gain money right as she runs out of resources. If I had played the black market turn correctly, we'd be in, well, not we, but Jenny would be in so much better of a circumstance. Look at all of that in a second, though. 1012 Doom and enemy cards. Corpse Trawler, I've been waiting for this. Corpse Trawler spawns by discarding a humanoid enemy at a location, like this accursed follower. If he fails to spawn, he'll get surged, but since he does, he's a 354 enemy with Hunter and Retaliate. He hits for 2 1. He's pretty threatening. But honestly, not the biggest deal in the world to us. Lily's evil card is a Catacombs Docent, which will be spawning here. And while I would like to deal with that Catacombs Docent, we are sort of busy with other things right now. Those other things being a variety of hunter enemies on the map, and one enemy that is a high priority to be dealt with. What we're going to do is Jenny's going to go first. We're going to move one, two, three times. This is going to engage with Jenny. We're going to use two actions to do that, and haste for the third move. Actually, because haste is the third move, we can engage it with Jenny, which is what I wanted to do because it doesn't trigger an attack of opportunity on our third move. Next, we're gonna use our third action and a well-connected to evade at three, four, only four, but plus four is eight to three, which we barely get through and evade this man. Then we're gonna move twice more into this location and spend two clues to do it. Lily's gonna keep tagging along. And we're gonna spend two clues as we must. These enemies are going to engage us. And I'm just going to give them both to Lily, because she's the one who's dealing with them. Tetsuo and Xavier are the ones who are taking the damage. So, um, yeah, haste and five actions. You can run pretty far in a straight line with that, can't you? Anyway, on Lily's turn, now that she's across the map, first action, I'm going to kill the sacrificial beast, I hope. I've been debating it for a while. I'm not sure which of these enemies to attack first. I'm going to go for the Corpse Dweller. Ideally, we kill both of them, but that seems highly unlikely with all these curses in the bag. We're swinging at 10 to 3. So that is passing by 3 on the first one. We hit for 3. Uh, we are only two locations away, so that's 3 again, and it's dead. And then we swing at 10 to 4, and it's dead too. Okay, cool. So all of that ho-humming I was doing, trying to figure out who to attack, was completely irrelevant. They're both dead. No hunter enemies are alive. This one does ready during the upkeep phase, however. And speaking of the upkeep phase, we take that. We're going to flip the brain discipline, as always, because it's very easy to have it come back the next round. Top of the round, 2 of 12 doom. And we're going to see our evil cards. This Catacombs Docent will be going... Oh, uh, I was supposed to flip this. When we got here, I just forgot to because of all the other stuff happening. And this is the one where we place a catacombs furthest from it. It's unfortunate that it's above, below, or to the right of this location. If we could use this one, it would be much better for us. Or if we could go left, it would be much better for us. I'm going to go with to the right, though. And they get horror tokens indicating that they're connected now. And library docent spawns at the nearest unrevealed location. So there's a second one up here now. Not library docent, catacombs docent. 
and a ghoul minion goes to Lily. That will not be an important part of our decision making. I actually really like the CO Skulls location. This is a really cool card in the Eternity set that fundamentally changes how the map is going to work. I like it quite a lot. Anyway, Jenny's going to go first. She has 18 resources, which is less than we would like. First action, we're going to use two of those resources to play Gios. We do not commit skills to test. We don't have to get the clues here. Well, we have to get one of them at least. So I'll cast Well Connected for plus four and then the Investigate check. Our base is currently at three, four, five, six. So we're at 10 to four. And that still passes. Six to four final number. Which gets us our second clue. We're going to spend both of them to go to this location. Shivering Pools, Victory 1, 5 Shroud, 2 Clues. Forced, after you end your turn here, take 1 direct damage or lose 5 resources. And the Forced effect lets me put a Catacombs location into the play below or to the right. I guess I'll go with below. And we know that this path going down is where our final Catacombs are going to need to be, because this is the 5th one and all of our objectives were in the bottom 5. Or this is our fifth one, either. This is the fourth one, and our objectives are either here or here. Because this wasn't it. Oh, we have two clues on Lily. That's actually quite helpful. I'm going to spend those clues, actually, and just move to another Catacombs location. Because five trial with my well connected spend is a bit much. Lavering the Bones is a two shroud, four clue location, no victory. When I put it into play, I put catacombs locations into play everywhere except to the left of it, which just means below, actually. And I think I want to let Lily investigate this during her turn, so I want to do something here. I'm just going to play Deep Knowledge to cycle through my deck faster, because this isn't a position that's actually helpful for me. And I think I'm going to tap Deep Knowledge and do it again. Because I am the best teammate imaginable. I get Lost Soul. I test um, at minus one or something. I'm just taking two damage. That's how this goes. It's not direct though, so I'll put one on Lola and one on myself. And now on Lily's turn, she may have crossed the whole map since she got this enemy, but she'll finally be dealing with it. Swinging at a million to two. It's dead because the maximum is minus five. And then I'm going to investigate twice at 4 to 2. Just trying to get Curse Tokens out of the deck as much as anything. So I got the star, I'll flip my Discipline back on. I'm now at 5 to 2. And I'll take the next test. Which is minus 2, so I actually get 2 clues and remove no curses. That is the end of our round. This thing has Hunter. Boy howdy, has it got left in the dust? I don't even know which round is faster. Probably down. Yeah, down is the faster route by 1 space. And then upkeep phase. Top of the round, 3 of 12 Doom, and Evil Cards. Lily, or Jenny rather, gets the Ghoul Minion this time, and we get Spirit's Torment on our location. We haven't seen this card since the first scenario. It's the one where it attaches to your location. If you don't spend a clue in an action and get rid of it, you're either going to take a horror or lose an action when you leave the location. I'm debating heavily what my opinion is about this Catacombs that I have to spend three actions to get to, and then get back from, that's just in this dead end. I'm pretty sure the answer is we completely ignore it until we realize the scenario is actually already won, and then we'll go get it. Seems reasonable to me. I'm going to let Lily go first. She's going to engage, swing at a million to two, kill the enemy, and investigate at five to two. I went to right click. Three is good enough, just barely, and we'll get another clue on Lily. I think Lily's gotten five clues this scenario, which is pretty solid for a character whose only clue finding is six cents, and whose main job is to kill people. Part of the reason I like Lily so much is that I think getting just six cents on a really competent fighter is enough clue finding to really help your team, and I'm feeling very vindicated in that belief. She's doing great. Killed everything effortlessly. Well, except for the specter of death behind us. And yeah, helping with clues as well. God knows Jenny's not doing it on her own, despite all the experience she's spent. Despite all of the assets at play. You know, I don't recall discarding an Eldritch Sophist and just got shuffled into my deck. I can tell you with absolute certainty, without even checking the footage, I mulliganed like one or two cards, one of them was Eldritch Sophist, and I forgot to put it back into the deck, didn't I? No wonder I can't get the red clock online. Not that it would matter if I don't ever remember to put things on it, let's just start it now and ignore all the benefits we've lost in the past. 
It's a travesty. Broken combo that just doesn't get used because I'm playing the game poorly. I think there are so many curses in the bag. Yeah, we actually can't play a double doubled false Dean Vargan, which is quite funny. I will start my turn by playing Easy Mark to draw a card and gain two resources. I guess I'll do that one as well. Um, okay, I'll do that one as well. Uh, that feels filthy. Holy shit, I couldn't have raked my deck better than that. Uh, I double double the hot streak to gain 10 resources then. Okay. Um, yeah, fuck Falsy and Bargain. I don't need that money, apparently. I'm gonna spend two of Lily's clues to move down into this location. Yeah, we'll be taking one horror each, and by that I mean Tetsuo, or Brother Xavier rather, will take both horror. And this catacombs is the Mound of Bones. One shroud, two clues, no victory. When it's put into play, put the top four catacombs into the deck on all sides. All right, cool. We've actually got our connected catacombs now in multiple ways. At the end of the current round, search the encounter deck and discard file for a malformed skeleton and spawn at the Mound of Bones. Nice. I really like this card. Uh, this one and this one, I think, really improved the scenario. I'm glad to see them here. And we need more clues to go to new locations. So I'm going to investigate with my well connected. I've got nothing else to use it on this turn. Yeah, that's silly. There might be like a triggered check on one of these locations. I have no idea. I still get the clue. And then last action, I'm going to spend both of our clues to go down here. As always, a safeguard has Lily glued to me. Tomb of Shot. Okay, cool. This turn has went really, really well. Like a degree that was not necessary. When Tomb of Shot isn't revealed, advance to Act 1B. Rows of skulls shatter their teeth endlessly as you pass through a narrow stone archway into a round chamber illuminated by firelight. In the center of the tomb stands the stranger, peering into the blaze. Across the wall, shadows dance and twist with the flickering of the flame. The stranger turns to face you and his own shadow spreads across the wall. Where a shadow's arm should be, tentacle shapes emerge, enveloping the walls in darkness. He lifts his hand towards the wall as if trying to show you something. So we spawn the man in the pallid mask at the Tomb of Shadows, and Ishimaru would have spawned as well at the starting location if we hadn't already killed her. The shadows cast along the bone walls shift in the shapes of several figures, acting out a macabre parody of the King in Yellow. Objective, tell us how to stop the path from opening. If the man in the pallid mask is defeated, advance. Alternative objective, what is he trying to show us? Investigators in the Tomb of Shadows, we spend the requisite number of clues, which is four, as a group to advance. Anyway, that's the end of our round. So, enemies, this thing hunts. Those guys do nothing, and upkeep phase. These scryings are not going to be relevant, but the second safeguard will be even less relevant, since there's only one teammate to follow. Top of the round, 4 of 12 doom. Crypt chill. I think I've probably got assets I can afford to lose. Oh, speaking of, let's make sure we actually do that every round. So I just forgot about it last time, because the act advanced. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing that says I can't get rid of my class of Black Onyx if I fail. Minus four is definitely enough to fail. And I'll just drop my class Black Onyx. On Lily's end, we get eyes in the walls. She's testing six to three, and for each point she fails by, she'll take one horror distributed evenly. Auto fail is all that matters here. Get out of here. Well, I guess curse cascades can always matter. So we need to get all of the clues here to get what seems like the better result. I, I don't know. We need the victory here anyway, so we're going to be doing this. Oh, we can just intel report them all. Well, that's kind of sad. First action, I double double intel report for eight, going down to 25 resources. And I take all of these clues. Double double on intel report is a little bit gross, and like most of the reason this Ginny deck is strong is because it's a deck with access to that and the money to do it. So we progress the act immediately, don't we? Yep, I spend four clues and we progress. Apparently it's doubtful to try to understand what he's showing us. I thought it would be doubtful to think it was nonsense. Can, my biggest problem with our coast is I'm never really sure by looking at actions what is conviction and what is doubt. But fine, we've sullied our otherwise flawless conviction run. We could have been maxed. And also for future reference, there is no meaningful gameplay impact from this if you're already like seated thoroughly in conviction or doubt, which I imagine you will be. Act 3A, The Way Out. 
bones rattle to the floor, dislodged with the shaking and crumbling of the caverns around you. The stranger grabs a skull from within the flames in the center of the chamber and flees. At the end of the round, the gate to hell is in play. Discard the location that is furthest from the gate to hell. Move each investigator and enemy that was at that location to an attacking location and deal two damage to each of them. And then we can advance if each undefeated investigator is at the gate to hell. Okay, so I've went around and counted out how far away each location is. It's a little bit more complicated than you think because of this thing. Our first location is going to be going away is the Tomb of Shadows, and then we're going to be giving decisions on our part of lead investigators which one to get away from. Which is good because it means we have a lot of fours that we can get rid of before this catacombs. Alright, so our objective is to actually reveal this location and that location and check for victory points before we leave. Also, we need to make sure to kill this man on the way out and check this location. It's a bit busier than I was thinking it was. Unfortunately, we're fresh out of clues right now. So, Lily's obviously activating her safe card, and Jenny is moving up. We're going to investigate at 6 to 1, I believe. Take this clue. Move again to... Uh, I think one more clue would be so nice, because then we can just move this way and start fighting the uh, Spectre of Death. I guess I'm at the point where I don't need money anymore, and I can start getting money back shortly with Double Double if I need to. Ah, shit, I've already used Double Double on Intel Report this turn. Alright, uh, there's an obviously just correct play here. I'm going to play Intel Report for 6. And I'm going to use it to get two clues off of this location, which is a victory location. And now I'm in an awkward position where I'm not really sure what I should be doing with Lily. I think the correct play is move up and investigate once and then move back down. I want this clue though. Well, I guess I'm not getting that clue. Or rid of the curse tokens in the bag. So, Hunter phase, this thing moves towards us, which is why I didn't want to move left. I didn't want to just hit for 2-2. Two, two. It's one of the only ways to make this scenario threatening. Upkeep phase. Azure flame can leave. We don't need that. Oh, did I use my thing? I most of you really did it. Yeah, we'll take it up. I was debating about how much money I had briefly, but it's definitely fine. Top of the round, 5 of 12 Doom and Evil Cards. Jenny is testing at not a particularly great number. I'll use Well Connected to gain 4 to this test. And I guess I'm going to have to actually do math. Minus 4, that's enough. We're fine. You want to bet that I forgot Red Clock last turn? Seems likely, right? All right, as Jenny, I'm going to go first. I'm going to use Double Double on an economy card because I just need to. It's going to be emergency cash this round because I would like to not fill the bag with curse tokens. Going to play Eldritch Sophist to get Red Clock working. Speaking of, I should have Red Clock with two, another charge because the turn started. And that means I get two free move actions this round. Also, probably triggered Decorated Skull at least once and haven't thought about it, huh? Oh, well. There's just too many things happening in this deck. Too many moving pieces for me, apparently. I'm going to spend my next action of moving up so that I can have Lily tag along. I'm going to spend one resource to kill this card, or one clue, rather, and one action as well. And then I'm going to move up again and bring Lily with me. And the reason for this is I'm just going to go deal with this location first. That way we can kill it next turn and figure out if either of these locations matter at all for us. Oh, speaking of, Man in the Pallet Mask is dead. Or the location he's at is dead, rather. So he's gonna get spit out with two damage into this location. I was suspecting immediately that I may have made the wrong decision because this feels a little bit impossible to obtain now. It might not be, though. And also, if it doesn't have victory, I won't be punished, so it's fine. Anyway, I'm going to kill this ravenous ghoul real quick. He's gone. And apparently, we want the clues at this location as well, because it's a victory location. I guess I'm going to just investigate at 5 to 4. Do I commit promise of power? I definitely commit guts to one of them. So, 7 to 4. Get one clue. But I think I'll just take the test. Like, if I miss it, Lily can get it. It's not a problem. I'm going to put promise of power towards it. Like, this curse bag has just been filled the entire scenario. Um, that should be fine. It's minus four, but I had plus four and I was already up by one, so I'll take the second clue. Hunters move, which means this thing's going to keep moving towards us. And upkeep fans. We actually can't play these false and bargains and deep knowledge because we can't afford, we literally can't put the curse tokens in the bag, which is quite funny. 
6 of 12 Doom, Evil Cards, Ghoul Minion, and the Pit Below. Well, we weren't planning on sticking around anyway, so that's fine. And since is it the start of the round or end of the round when this happens? End of the rounds. So I need to kill a location that's number four. We'll obviously not be picking my own location and breaking the map in half. That would ruin me. So I think the best location is the one the Man of the Pallid Mask is at. It'll spit this thing out here. It will kill the Man of the Pallid Mask. And we'll get one more tick under chasing the stranger. Because the map is still connected via this location and this location. So I can come back if I need to hit here. I'm going to evade normally this ghoul minion. Minus one. Which is enough to evade him. Then I'm going to move twice to here as my next two actions. I don't know if there's actually an official ruling on when you enter locations. Uh, whether or not you reveal the location before or after you engage with these guys. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be giving them to Lily either way. But just realize I don't actually know the answer to that. So, this one is the narrow shaft. Nice, victory one. I'm glad I came back. Two shroud, two clues. Forest, when you would move from narrow shaft to an unrevealed location, we will never be doing that. Forest, when narrow shaft is revealed, put the topmost card. Also, that effect's really, really brutal. <laughs> Holy shit. That basically just says find a different path forward because you're not doing it. And the forest effect doesn't matter. There are no catacombs left in the deck. Now, my most important question is, is this a victory location? So I'm going to use Well Connected on a check against this man's four. So I have six plus six against four, 12 against four, easy pass. I get to look at an unrevealed location. There's no victory here. It's dead to me. So we just want to get these clues, kill this thing, check this location, and get out of here. Don't have an intel report in my hand, so I'll just be investigating at six to whatever the number is, two. And passing and getting rid of a curse. So we take the clue. We spend three resources to tick this up. And it's Lily's turn. Lily is going to kill these men with extreme prejudice. Dead. And, whoops. I didn't mean to get rid of that, but minus four is another kill. Cyclopean Hammer is just absolutely silly, isn't it? For my last action, no one's close to dying. Nothing really seems to matter very much. I guess I investigate. Like, it, it does something. So 5 to 4, or 5 to 2 rather. Turns out what it did is get rid of curse tokens. And that'll be our round. Hunters move, this man readies, this thing goes off and does nothing. Upkeep, Sacrificial Beast is here. Where this location is here, which is funny. Nope, unfortunately for us, it's not there, it's here. This is much further away even with this token. So while this thing is still annoying, we do have enough money to get to the end of the scenario while using the Green Man Medallion every turn. So it won't really matter. And upkeep over here, doesn't really change anything. Top of the round, 7 of 12 Doom, evil cards. Pit below, will not do anything, we're leaving this turn. And Spirit's Torments, will just be dealing to horror to us and killing Tatsuwa. Alright, so for our turns, Jenny goes first, she investigates at a million. That's not how you investigate. <laughs> so like I was saying, we investigate at a million. Easy pass. By a million, I mean six to two, but hey, minus three is still a pass. Then I'm going to move down. We're both going to take one horror. I'm going to put Jenny's horror onto the Eldritch Sophist. And the other horror onto Tetsuo Mori. We're going to remember to do this. It's going to come online. Red Clock goes up to its third one, and we get our sixth action. <sighs> it's there. We did it. And the way this effect works is it's a forced effect at the start of every turn. So at any point during my turn, I seem to take a charge off the right clock with Eldritch Sophist, drop it on Decorated Skull, and then at the start of the next turn, it gains a charge, goes up to three, gives me an additional action, and we loop forever. It's great. It's totally worth having this deck, and it's probably not strictly my bad play that's making it look bad, but I'm certainly making it look a lot worse than it should. Most cards do nothing when you forget they exist every time you play them, which is particularly funny for an integral combo piece. Anyway, we got the clue, we move down, we move right, these two enemies engage us, and we're going to give both of them to Lily unless there's a prey stopping me. There isn't. I activate haste for a free move down, use an actual move action to go right once. We have enough clues to open any locations we need. I use another move action, and then as my last move action... I'm going to enter this location as well, using Ginny's clues. By the way, here's another enemy, Lily. Sorry about that. When you reveal blocked passage, take two damage. You cannot leave blocked passage this round. 
I'll put one of those damage on a Jenny and give the other one to Tatsuya. Actually, no. I'll give the other damage to Brother Xavier and explode him, dealing two damage as a free action to this thing. Brother Xavier's never died before, but it turns out that not only does he have plus one head and the ability to soak for my other teammates, when he dies, you can deal two damage to an enemy at your location for free. I mean, as long as you don't consider his death the cost. Now, it's Lily's turn. She has just sort of tagged along with a merry shot through the entire map. Turns out there's no victory here, but we do need to kill the victory point monster. Oh, speaking of, I should have gotten one less resource during my turn because upkeep doesn't account for Sacrificial Beast. And I should have spent three resources on the Green Man Medallion. I'm going to swing at the Sacrificial Beast first, which I shouldn't have done because all the curses in the bag. The attack deals one less damage. Even if it's successful, if you get a Cultist. That's brutal. I was only up two of those. That's only a singular point of damage. Going to swing again. It's very dead. And then I'm going to swing at the Spectre of Death. Ten to three. It takes three damage, and it'll be very easy to kill next turn at this point. All right, enemy phase. No enemies anywhere but here. They hit me for two, two. I'm going to kill Tatsuo and ignore his effect. Don't care about it at all. Take one, one on myself as Lily. And upkeep phase. Drawing the sign causes me to discard my whole hand. Very nice. I'm going to keep a backstab, a money talks, a counter espionage, and toss the rest. On Lily's end, she's going to flip a Discipline. Actually, I'm going to take a damage and a Horror. I would like these online to make me better at hitting people for now. Top of the round, 8 of 12 Doom. It's glaring how much harder it is to 100% this scenario than the previous one. Actual criticism of this campaign for a second. A Phantom of Truth is comically undertuned for Conviction runs. I want to say that either Unspeakable Oath or Echoes of the Past just ends on Act 1 if you're doing a Doubt run. Same criticism for that scenario, whichever one it is. There are just a couple scenarios in this campaign where if you're doing certain runs, they're comically easy, and I do not like it. Anyway, we just did Doom, Evil Cars. I got eyes on the wall. I'm still at a brain of five, thanks to Hias and Black Fan. I'll money talks this just to cycle the card. Cool, that gives me something else. Obscuring Fog does literally nothing. It's on a location with no clues that never had clues or victory. <laughs> All right, uh, Lily's going to just beat this thing to death. She needs to deal seven more damage, so she needs to succeed by two at least once. That's, oh. All right, that could be complicated. So we only get minus two, but we only deal two damage anyway because of the cultist token. Auto fail. And... Three, so it's got two health left. I was doing two actions at the start of my round, getting rid of drawing the signs. And I remember to do the upkeep stuff where I take a charge, put it on red clock, and immediately move it to decorated skull with the Eldritch Sophist. By the way, this should have at least two more charges because of all the people Lily just killed. Probably many more than that, but I'm not going to fret about it because it's not relevant. Then I'm going to engage this thing and use backstab. That's going to cost me three resources. I'm going to tap well connected for plus five to my base of six for 11 and kill this thing. It's nice that I got to play backstab at least once. I think that's the first time I've used it, maybe the second. It's probably getting cut from the deck, but I'm very sad about it. It's not something I want to do. Anyway, uh, let me do a quick double check. There's no victory points anywhere on the map because I can easily go get them if I'm wrong. I've looked at the other side of this already, but yep, it's fine. Got it. Got it. Yeah, we've done everything that needs doing. I move twice back towards the starts. And there should be one act under this one. So I will haste back to the beginning of the catacombs. Because this shouldn't end this scenario. There should be something here. Oh, what? Why are there two act three A's? You know what would make this a lot easier is if I finished reading this card and realized like, oh, hey, you pick one of the act three A's based on which one of these you do. So there is more consequence than conviction or doubt to this decision, or at least maybe there is. Anyway, since I did find the clues and I got the doubt one, I have Act 3A leading the way out. So this one's gone. And I'm going to go ahead and not use my ability to leave. And I'll catch you soon. I'm going to go waste four turns of my life real quick while I get more experience. All right, I am finally done. All we have to do is tap this, spend three resources. So if you're wondering what I do during these turns, by the way, 
I pretty much just increase my resources by the amount of actions I have, tap premium medallion, and swing with this if I need to. I use well connected to pass checks, and I use anything like counter espionage to help out Lily. Not that she needs it with this much soak implant. Also, apparently, I missed my discard pile at some point. This is the board state. We had to move back to avoid a uh, hole in the ground treachery card. We moved to the end. Game ends. 38 is um, a lot of experience. I think that's six. I must have misclicked at this point because it should either be at 36 or 39. 38 is not a multiple of three. Anyway, it doesn't round up, so it's six experience either way. And this is the game over. We have gotten the maximum experience possible. Let's see our resolution. Following the stranger's lead, you take a circuitous route through the underground passageways. Finally, you're confronted by a dead end, a tunnel blocked by an impossibly thick wall of collapsed bone and rubble. The stranger stands nearby, holding the partially charred skull he pulled from the fire in the Tomb of Shadows. What now? you ask, confused. He holds the skull aloft, and the floor begins to collapse into a pit of dark emptiness below. Bones and rubble from the wall fall into the pit and grow larger with each moment. The stranger bows, then falls back into the pit before you can grab him. Wait, you call out, but it's too late. With the pit growing and threatening to swallow the catacombs entirely, you have no choice but to follow him. So I've realized that my mistake with the axe actually caused the game to be like substantially more complicated than it needed to be. If you kill the man in the pallid mass, everything starts collapsing, but if you ask him to lead the way, everything's fine. I mean, until the end, then it seems thoroughly not fine. Let's go to resolution 2 and see how that's going. Unfortunately, we have to switch all of our cultist tokens to tablet tokens because we've sullied our conviction run. And speaking of, we should remove all the curse tokens at this point in the game. So, in our campaign log, we recorded that we know the side of the gates. We also had two tally marks under chasing the stranger. Uh, 11 seems like a thoroughly unreasonable number. We replaced our cultist tokens with tablet tokens. And we get victory X. In our case, victory X is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Southern and Delve token for eight. I rather hope that in next scenario I like play Red Clock properly and it's able to show itself off. But also, every time I play this deck, I look at this Red Clock shenanigans I'm doing. Like, if this was Lucky Cigarette Case and this was Milan, and the decorated skull was just something else, like you know, the Golden Pocket Watch cost six experience as well. Like, wouldn't the deck just be better? Isn't this unnecessary? And it's hard for me to even say accurately, because we're overkilling the scenario so much. We had 100% completion with four Doom left on the clock while racking this thing up and handicapping myself. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what Optimal Genie looks like. It's a mess, though. There's too many assets in play. There's so many moving parts. Unlike this, this entire deck is just one card, and the rest of this is superfluous. Anyway, let's wrap it up. I've quite enjoyed the Catacombs. The Pallet Mask is a really good scenario. I actually think the Catacombs are a better example of an explore mechanic than anything in the Forgotten Age, which is kind of sad. But yeah, I've been really liking Path to Carcosa. I think the Return to Box adds a lot to it. I think the Pilot Mask is a great scenario. And I'll talk more about these decks and how I might improve them next time when I start Scenario 7, Black Stars Rise. I've been rather incoherent. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.